It was 30 years ago that the Texas Parks and Wildlife television series, originally known as Made in Texas, got its start. Lee Smith is one of more than 30 producers, photographers, writers, and editors who have contributed to the show since its first broadcast in 1985. Hi, my name is Lee Smith. I was a producer at Texas Parks and Wildlife for 25 years. My favorite story was the Oasis of the Kingfisher. And what was significant about this is that I had all three species of kingfishers feeding at the same time at one location. I don't think that will ever happen again. And it was very easy to produce because all I had to do was intro it and then just let the kingfishers do their thing. In the brush country of Southwest Texas, my uncle has a ranch. Some may say it's a desolate place, but to me, this land has a special kind of beauty. Scattered around the ranch are several stock tanks. These are man-made ponds built to supply livestock with water. They also can provide wildlife with some excellent habitat. I've hunted and fished these tanks since I was seven years old, and I've been shooting video here for over a decade. I've photographed all sorts of animals that stop by these tanks for refreshment. I've been so lucky to come out here and experience this part of the natural world. I'm not sure how many sunrises and sunsets I've witnessed here, but each one has something special about it, something unique. One December morning, I was shooting video at one of my favorite tanks. A snipe and a greater yellow legs were keeping me company when a belted kingfisher arrived and began to hunt breakfast. It's always a special treat to watch the amazing flying ability of kingfishers. They can stop and hover wherever they want. And then plunge head first into the water after their quarry. After they catch a fish, they kill it and spend some time tenderizing their meal. There are three species of kingfishers in North America. This is the belted kingfisher. They're common throughout the United States and can be seen along ponds, lakes, and rivers. They tend to hunt from a variety of favorite perches from around the shore.
One morning, I noticed something different. This was a kingfisher, all right, but at least twice as big as the belted kingfishers. It also sounded different. Belted kingfishers were the ones I usually saw. They get their name from the blue belt across their chest. This is a male. Females are very similar, but with a chestnut coloring on their chest below their belt. The new arrival was a female ringed kingfisher. This was surprising, since ringed kingfishers are a tropical bird and not usually found this far north. On the males, the chestnut color covers the entire breast, but the females include a blue band and a white stripe. Then I noticed something even more amazing. Just below, in the same tree, was a green kingfisher. Green kingfishers are the smallest, quietest, and most reclusive. Texas is the only state that has all three species. The 1,000 square miles of the Rio Grande Valley is normally the only area where you have a chance to see all three. But here I was 200 miles to the north, and I had all three species within 30 yards of each other. If I hadn't captured this on video, no one would have ever believed me. All three species, at one time, at one location. This went on for one week, and I came back every day to watch. Over the next year, the waters that were so full of life disappeared in the drought. I came back, but the kingfishers did not. But for one week, one winter, it was an oasis for me and the kingfishers. <laughs> 